Well, here we are back at the Sickle Bar Mower Saga. We're in phase two. We made a lot of improvements. We'll see if they worked. All right, well, hello. Hopefully you've watched the mowing with the ground drive sickle bar mower part one, where we had an old tongue on this machine that was cut off and turned into a tow bar. And we used the tow bar just to see if we could get all the mechanisms working. And oh, about halfway through it broke. And uh, again, go back to the video number one, you'll see how that happened. But so I need a pull for that sickle bar mower. And uh, we don't have any Amish communities too close by. We can get one, but they're pretty pricey. And my buddy, my Amish friend said, well, why don't you just get an ash tree and throw it on your lumber mill and make your own poles? So it uh, turns out the emerald ash borer is infesting our place here. And it took out one of my trees in the front yard. I thought it might come back this year, but springtime came and it didn't. So I ripped off the bark just to make sure it was emerald ash borer and it had all the signs of it. So. This is my piece of ash, and uh, I hope to make some tongues out of it. So we'll see how that goes. some of the uh, mess cleaned up here I, I gotta brag on Sean he you know he does quite a bit of cutting out in the woods but it's not real often he gets to test his skills and this tree was a little bit of a test because he didn't want to hit that one he certainly didn't want to hit the house um, he didn't want to damage this tree here on the corner and we had a few other obstacles a light pole and some some issues so he hit dead center and not just that I have a rose bush you can't really see him because of the weeds but I've actually got a rose bush on either side of the sidewalk and he managed to go right between them so I'm pretty impressed with my guy <laughs> I've got a couple of challenges with this because it's not perfectly straight. The other thing is about nine feet down, I got a knot on this side. And uh, so I'm gonna have to use the other side because I need straight grain uninterrupted for 14 feet. So it might be kind of tricky, but we'll see what we can get out of it. If nothing else, I can get some nine foot lengths, maybe split a few Pittman bars or something like that out of it. But ash is a really good wood to use. So we'll try to get this up on the mill. I do is I go down here and I look for uh, knotless wood and as you can see there's knots here and here this face has several knots on it 
I'm not going to be able to use that. This face has several knots on it. So what I'll do is I'll flip it, see if I can find a face without knots, go four inches down, cut it, see if that opposite face doesn't have them. And if that's the case, I can use that as a pull, but it's not looking terribly promising. It, in order to get 14 feet without knots, usually the tree has to grow in a pretty dense forest, so it goes straight up with no smaller branches, or lower branches, essentially. And um, a lot of these ash trees that we have around here are kind of not in the forest, they're out in the open, and they grow a lot of lower branches, so that kind of hurts us. But that's the way it is. That's why you pay money for a good ash pole. Well, you saw we tried to make our own ash pole and uh, didn't quite go as planned because we had too many knots in the wood. So we ended up buying a pole. We had to do a 14 foot long because it actually attaches to the tongue truck back here and then goes out from there. And you'll notice this one actually has a little twist in it. So it's really difficult to find a really straight good ash pole. But safety is our priority, and uh, the strength and integrity of this one and the grain I think is really good, so we'll see how it works. We had a bunching up of hay in here. We had a problem with the locking mechanism, so we went through and tried to fix a lot of things, not just replacing out the tongue. So let's start. We started down here. We had a lot of bunching of the grass right here at the shoe, okay? One thing I figured out, and thanks a lot, Norm McNair and Steve Hoover for helping me out, this plate right here, this ledger plate, was not in there. And so this section, the last section, had no shear plate to cut against, and so it wasn't cutting at all. It was simply pushing the grass out of the way. So now I've got a shear plate in there. Uh, hopefully that's going to work well. I had to uh, pick up that hold-down plate a little bit. The other reason it might have been bunching is it did not have this. This is a guard that actually takes the grass and pushes it back this way. I actually found when I took this apart that it was there, but it was broken off. So I got a new one from Ivan Yoder over in Bloomfield, Iowa. Thanks a lot, Ivan. And the other thing I got, and this was by recommendation of, of Steve Hoover and Norm McNair, I went and I went ahead and got a tongue truck. Now the tongue truck, this is a single wheel. It's got what we call a crazy wheel on it, and that casters all over the place. So it doesn't take side load off the horses like the double wheeled will, but it does take the weight off of their collar. So it makes it a little bit more relaxing. So the front part of that tongue articulates up and down, and then this, as you can see, all the weight of this is actually sitting on that wheel. So hopefully that'll help the horses quite a bit. Makes it a lot more stable for the driver too. If you come back here, we had an issue where, if you noticed in the first video, I spent a lot of time holding on to this thing and standing on this thing because this little cam lock right here was not working. I had to break that free and get that working. So now, if I simply push down and pull that back or kick it back with my foot, the whole blade falls down. And we can, we're in the cutting mode right now. And then if I turn a corner, I can pick it up or if I want to go home, I can pick it up, kick that in, and it locks in place, and then I can pick the blade up and tie it off there. We're pretty excited about these changes, and we're looking forward to trying it out. So Danielle's got the horses hitched in the barn. Let's go see how it works.
right, so we did some short grass first, and it seemed to work fine in the short grass. One issue we noticed is we have a lot of hills here at Redgate Farm, and especially coming out of the shed, the tongue was not able to articulate up high enough in order to keep the weight off their shoulders. Now, not a big deal right down there, but as we go through here, I want to give just a little bit more uh, ability for that tongue to get up so they don't have to carry that on their harness collar so much. But other than that, everything's looking good. We've done the short grass, let's go to the long grass, see how it works. repairs. Looks like I had a bunch of dead grass out here. It kind of seized up, pinched up a bunch of, bunch of grass in there. We also, Steve Hoover had mentioned that we've actually got serrated blades and serrated guards, which is really good for stemmy stuff like alfalfa, but not so good for grass. We've got some super thick grass out here, and uh, I'm getting rained on. Uh, you probably shouldn't do this in the rain. Well, I'd call that a successful day. We were pretty happy. What we were trying to test today was the mechanics of the system. Not so much are we cutting hay or whatnot, straight lines or anything like that, but we wanted to see how it functioned, and it wasn't an ideal day. It was wet. It was a little bit rainy out there. We also noticed we learned a lot of things here today. I've got some adjustments to do on these sections here to get those down over the guard so it's a good shear plate. Got an adjustment on the tongue on the angle of the sickle bar. There are so many factors that go into this and we're given, getting an, a nice appreciation for that. And we thank the people who are bringing us uh, comments, especially the positive comments. The negative ones don't do us much good, but the positive ones help us out. We realize the pasture has a lot to do with it too. You don't want ruts and hills and things like that. You've got to watch out for sticks and obstacles and boy, it's, it's easy to get a messy pasture after a couple years, especially a windstorm out here. You know, the pioneers worked a lot harder than we do, and I have an appreciation for the gentlemen out there and the ladies that are putting this equipment back together because we've lost a lot of the knowledge, and there's a tremendous amount out there, but a lot of us have to relearn it, and it's kind of tough. But thanks a lot for those who are helping out, and we're going to continue this saga and see if we can get a perfect cutting machine. Well, thanks again for watching. We love learning here at Redgate Farm, and we hope that we can share some of that knowledge with you. If you want more detailed knowledge of what we're doing and aspects of how we do things, visit our Patreon site. You can see the link below.